Well, one of the, the small joys of Advent, at least in this season of it, of the three-year lectionary, is that we hear pretty much the whole career of John the Baptist. At the beginning of Advent, he's already an adult who's coming out of the desert with his message, and he's this wild figure who's calling people to repent. Had we had a fourth Sunday, uh, you know, fourth Wednesday of Advent, uh, which we won't have this year because of the way the calendar works, we would have heard about the birth of John the Baptist and the way that he was named. The fact that his father was struck dumb, unable to speak until the child was born, and he had named him John. And then today, we hear sort of the, 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 the end of the story. It's all mixed up as far as the order, but today on this third Wednesday, we hear about the end of John's career. He's been arrested. He's effectively been silenced. He's in jail. And now he's sending his followers to Jesus to ask, are you the one? We can interpret that to mean, have I, have I backed the right horse? Have I spent my, my career doing what I was supposed to do? Did I get the message right from God that I was trying to communicate? And Jesus, irritatingly, as is often the case, doesn't give a straight answer. Are you the one? Well, the correct answer is either yes or no. But that's not what Jesus does. I suspect he's a little exasperated because these guys show up when Jesus is out there restoring sight to the blind and healing people and casting out demons. And they're asking, well, are you the Messiah or not? And says, well, what have I just been doing here? Excuse me, I've been busy. And so that's what he sends back, this message that comes from the prophets. I don't think that Jesus doubts John's faith. I'm sure that Jesus doesn't doubt the fact that John will be well-versed in what the Torah and the prophets say the Messiah is supposed to be about in this world. But I think that even those of deep faith, which would certainly be John the Baptist, at times have to have their expectations reset a little bit, better to align with the plan of God. It's very easy to be here Wednesday, Sunday, every other time we come into this place, hear the word and walk away and think we're walking away with it. But the minute we walk away, the, the cares of the world and the cares of our lives and everything else that goes on in our head begin to eat away at it. And somehow that perfection we might have seen briefly in what's read here is replaced once again by what we hope will happen in the world, our, our hopes and fears, as the hymn says that we'll sing on Sunday. And so I think that's kind of what Jesus is telling John. Well, this is the answer you're going to get, but also this is enough. It is enough to know that the Messiah is doing these things, regardless of what you might have expected the Messiah was going to do. You, John, who are deeply religious and deeply spiritual, would nonetheless have known, well, the Messiah might come and, and set everything right in the world, come with an army, throw the Romans out not what you're going to get. That, dear friends, is where the rub comes for you and for me when we hear this lesson now as Advent is reaching its conclusion, is we also bring our own expectations to the manger, do we not? What it is that God should be doing in the world if only God would listen to us because we know what needs to happen. What would happen if only our view of the perfection of the universe were somehow shared by God? God sends back a message, well, no, what you're going to get is a baby. A poor child born in an obscure place to poor parents. And nonetheless, that will be enough. Even then, that's not quite enough of a smack on the side of the head for you and for me, I don't think. It certainly isn't for me. I'll just preach to myself and you can listen. I think added to that is the idea that somehow this goes on in our life all the time. What are the things you're praying for right now? What are the things I'm praying for right now? Will we, will we, will we be satisfied if God sends the correct response even if it's not the one we were expecting? Will we be willing to still stand up and say, Hosanna, if in fact we don't get exactly what it was we wanted, the answer that was the exact phrasing that we thought we would get to answer our prayer? I think this is the time when 
the faithful people of St. Thomas's, the faithful people of 2023 are called once again to reset our expectations, better to align with the plans of God. There's still a few days until Christmas. We can still revise our Christmas lists to God. Maybe now is the time for a little more thy will be done and a little bit less, here's what I want. Let it be so for us by Sunday and every day that follows. Amen.